So I mentioned the 1990s was a big period for frag mining's expansion throughout not only uh, on the states but Ontario, and so there was a lot of studies looking at the whys. A lot of disturbance on the landscape, so a lot of our green spaces were being uh, um, developed, a lot more urbanization, a lot more nutrients in the landscape, and a lot of changes to our, our creeks and rivers, a lot more flashy pulses, uh, just because of the amount of pavement that was being put on the landscape. A really great study came out from Quebec, because they're really bad if you drive east. Um, that linked transportation corridors, the development of roads with spread of families, stretched strong correlation. And another interesting finding, this was from Karen Alexander with the Coastal Center. She basically mapped Phragmites from Sarnia all the way up to Wyarton. And what she found was where it was just getting started along the, the shoreline of Lake Huron where there's a creek coming in. If she went up the creek up onto the watershed, she would find Phragmites up in the, into the roadside ditches or the agricultural ditches. And this is how it's getting spread around. The heavy equipment will go into an infested ditch somewhere <coughs> to do its work. The equipment gets put on a flatbed truck and it gets driven 700 kilometers someplace else, up north, wherever. And it doesn't get cleaned. And so this is not an uncommon sight in southern Ontario. And what's most disturbing to me now, when I head up north, I'm starting to see it more and more along our roads, Highway 400, 69, 11, and all the, the side roads. This is just outside of Sault Ste. Marie. And it was interesting, when I was doing assessment work, up there in 2011, there was a construction crew from Southern Ontario working on the roads. I mean, that's what's happening. It's starting to get problematic in the agricultural ditches in the southern uh, uh, part of Ontario where it's been there the longest, and um, major spread vector as well. And it's starting to impact agriculture. So we are getting interest from Ontario um, arming us uh, communities now and trying to deal with this and help us with it. And this is not an uncommon site where I come from down Norfolk County near Long Point area. A lot of the agriculture drainage ditches have this. Um, so you can see what's happening with the seeds and parts heading down towards the lake. This is Sarnia. This is a really Badly stocked in uh, agricultural drainage ditch, which goes for kilometers and kilometers. And just this way, for uh, two kilometers down, is Lake Huron. So all this seed and biomass is heading towards the lake. This actually is being cleaned up this year. The other reason that Phragmites is spreading around, particularly on Lake Erie and Huron shorelines, is the, the declining lake levels. And um, so what happened in 2012, as you all know, it was very low lake levels. And so where Fragmonies already was established, it could move into these areas. I was doing some work at Kellen's 20 Point, and I thought, well, I'll just start measuring how quickly this is spreading. And this was just within a couple of days growth right here. And uh, if, I, if I stand there, I felt like the break was going to involve me. So this is all heading up towards the lake. So there's that, that previous wall of Fragmonies, and this is all heading up towards the lake. And so that particular year, that growing season, for egg money along the shoreline, wherever it was established, it took off. It really went. This is another reason it's being spread around. I was doing some work up uh, King Carden shoreline, really rare coastal ecosystems, and up in northern Bruce as well. And also saw this on the shoreline of uh, uh, Lake Superior. ATVs. As soon as the lake levels drop, boys and their toys, or girls and their toys, go up and they drive. And they don't consider where they're driving through, what they're driving, what they're harming. They're just having fun. Um, but they're also spreading Phragmites around. And uh, there was one interior wetland up in North Bruce. Phragmites was in there. there was no reason to be there other than there was an ATV track going in. So ATVers are spreading it this around as well. So what and who cares? Well, from a uh, human perspective, there's some issues with it. It's impacting our recreational uh, uses in some of these areas where it's really bad. This area here used to be birding, a uh, bird watching area at, at Rondo. This area here is a uh, church camp. They had actually put a pool in because they couldn't use the shore anymore for the kids to recreate. They couldn't get rid of the fray. Um, and there's other uh, issues as well. Um, people that live along the shore, they can't see the lake anymore. They can't see the sunsets. They can't enjoy just sitting watching the lake. Um, 
declining property values, seeing this in King Carden, Shoreline, and people are upset about this. They're paying high taxes for lakeshore property, and they don't have a lakeshore. The other issues are with hazards, uh, blocking roadside intersections or fire hazards. This is becoming more and more problematic. That standing dead biomass can catch fire, and it's a very intense fire, and it can be quite dangerous. This is why I'm concerned about this. This is Rondo Provincial Park. So I did assessment work in this park back in 2005. When I was in University in Ohio State, I knew there was a problem on the eastern seaboard with those wetlands. I didn't hear too much about what was going on in the Great Lakes. And when, after my assessment work, having to spend days and days and days in this stuff, we have a serious problem. The birds would use the edges. I would find nests along the edges. I would find the turtles and the snakes and the frogs and, and whatnot. But once I get in about 10 meters, dead zones, like nothing using this habitat, nothing. And this isn't just one wetland on our Great Lakes. This is one of many. So we literally have hundreds and hundreds of hectares of habitat being lost to this point. And there's been lots of studies looking at the impacts on these ecosystems by Phragmites. Phragmites has really high evapotranspiration rate. If you're in a Phragmites stand in the summer, you're dying. It's just so humid in there and uh, hot. Uh, and in a year, if you're in an isolated um, situ uh, uh, wetland where the, there's no inflow of water, it can actually dry it out. And it's really impacting the nutrient cycling in these systems. With our native plants, they break down and the nutrients get uh, through the system again. Frag, it, it retains it and it alters it. And this is the biggest part right here. We're losing our plants. And so I've done literally hundreds of these square meter plots assessing various uh, wetlands and, and also uh, restoration initiatives. And this is, this is basically what I'm finding. In an established cell, you'll get 69% standing dead Phragmites, and it stays standing dead for years. I'm tracking one now, year seven. Like, they just don't break down. And then 28% you'll get that live biomass, and if you're lucky, you'll find some of our native plants. And so this is what's being lost. This is a very rare ecosystem on Lake Huron. This is within the Carolinian zone. This is southern end. This is, this is, um, your, uh, this is at Kettle Stony Point, First Nation, actually. And right to the right and left is this wall of Frag coming in. This is at Rondo. Uh, I already showed you one image of Rondo. This is an interior site. This is extremely valuable habitat for uh, endangered turtles and others, birds. And there's that wall of Phragmites coming. This slough goes all the way up here about a kilometer. Just to my left is that other wall coming in. <coughs> what we're finding are dead turtles in this thick uh, biomass. They get in and they can't get out. And there's no food for them. So this is a desiccated turtle that was found by a turtle researcher there. There's, there's no water, there's no food, and they get, they have to really force their way through these standing dead stalks to, to get where they need to go, and they just run out of energy. The other impacts, this actually ha um, was found out, Ryan was doing research on um, parasites in turtle eggs at Long Point. So he had in the nest temperature loggers and, and humidity loggers, and over some of the nests that summer, Phragmites moved over. And within the nests, what he found was really, really low viability of, of uh, egg hatching success, lower, re lower temperatures because of the shading and lower moisture content. So that's something he just happened to pick up studying something else. This research here by um, David Green, he's been looking at endangered fowler's toads at Long Point for over two decades. And he has really strong correlation with reduced significantly reduced population and increase in, in Phragmites. If you ever have, uh, if you're ever lucky enough like I am to be able to spend uh, my days out in, in a nice healthy wetland, there's more to it than just the poster children of the wetlands, the ducks and the frogs and the geese and uh, the turtles. There is a lot of other species out there that rely on these ecosystems. And so here's just a snapshot of what I um, get to see when I'm out there. Monarchs really use these coastal environments, by the way. You wouldn't think they're in a wetland, but they are. Every once in a while, you get to see a really cool sight. I thought this eagle was injured. He just didn't want to share his lunch with me. So I didn't have uh, view. 